the assessment of PDA by echocardiography in the preterm infant must answer the following questions. Is the DA patent? What is its size? What is the direction of the shunt? Is the PDA hemodynamically significant? Patent ductus arteriosus can be seen on each of the classic echo views, but the most preferred views are the parastinal short axis view and the suprastinal view. With parastinal short axis view, the DA is visualized at the base of the heart by moving the probe slightly anteriorly toward the pulmonary artery. Besides the short axis and suprastinal views, it is also possible to see the DA in the parastinal long axis view by moving the probe anteriorly toward the pulmonary artery. The subcostal and the left high parastinal long axis views also allow the detection of the DA. The most accurate view for measuring the size of the DA is the high left parastinal short axis window, also called ductal view, concentrating on the main pulmonary artery, the origin of the right pulmonary artery, which is not always visible, and of the left pulmonary artery can be visualized, the DA is positioned to the left of it. The DA should be measured at its narrowest point, before its entry into the main pulmonary artery. Measurement of the ductal size is not very accurate. It is not recommended to use the color Doppler, which can exaggerate the size. A PDA is considered small at less than 1.5 mm, moderate when it ranges between 1.5 and 3 mm, and large if the dimension exceeds 3 mm. The direction of the shunt across the PDA can be right to left, bidirectional, or left to right. In order to document it, color Doppler is required. A right to left shunt across the PDA is more difficult to see. Color Doppler will show a flow going from the pulmonary artery toward the descending aorta. Thus, both great arteries and the DA will appear blue on color Doppler, because the blood moves away from the transducer. When the pulmonary vascular resistance falls, the shunt will be bidirectional with a flow above the baseline during the systole, and below the baseline during the diastole. Velocities are usually low and suggest equal pressure in the pulmonary artery and the descending aorta. Color Doppler shows alternating red and blue. Once the pulmonary pressure drops further, the shunt will be left to right and increases in velocity at the power Doppler. PDA should be considered as a dynamic physiologic shunt that at a certain threshold, or after a specific duration of exposure, may become harmful. In the case of hemodynamically significant PDA, the pulmonary blood flow increases due to the amount of blood running back from the descending aorta into the lung circulation through PDA. This pattern is known as steel phenomenon. At the same time, the systemic blood flow decreases for the same reason. Thus, the pulmonary to systemic flow ratio increases. There is no clear clinical definition of hemodynamically significant PDA. A staging system, including comparison between clinical and echocardiographic criteria, seems the best way to deal with the problem. The main echocardiographic criteria mentioned in the literature to define the hemodynamically significant PDA include Enlargement of the left atrium with a left atrium to aortic valve ratio, greater or equal to 1.5. Absent or retrograde diastolic flow in the descending aorta, and systemic arteries. A moderate to large PDA diameter, greater or equal to 1.5, at the narrowest point. And an unrestrictive, pulsatile, transductal flow. Left atrium to aortic ratio is measured on parastinal long axis view using M mode. A cut is made in the left atrium, at the level of the aortic valve, with the transducer placed perpendicular to it. The aortic valve is measured just before its opening, at the end of the diastole, whereas the left atrium is measured at its maximal volume during the systole. 
Herein is represented the normal Doppler blood flow pattern in the pericalosal, celiac trunk, mesenteric, and renal artery. Although the PDA shunts blood away from the systemic circulation throughout the cardiac cycle, this becomes more apparent during diastole. Interrogation of the blood flow in the main systemic arteries, by color and pulsed wave Doppler, is useful to detect anomalies of end organ perfusion due to PDA, and represents an important aid in staging the hemodynamic impact of the ductus on the systemic circulation. Using pulsed wave Doppler, three patterns of diastolic flow can be distinguished, forward, absent, and retrograde flow. A retrograde or absent diastolic flow, indicates large ductal steel due to a hemodynamically significant PDA. Pulmonary hyperperfusion due to a hemodynamically significant PDA, can be detected by interrogating the blood flow velocities of the left pulmonary artery, and can be used to define the hemodynamic impact of the ductus on the pulmonary circulation. Elevated mean, and diastolic blood flow velocities in the left pulmonary artery, should be taken into consideration when staging the hemodynamic impact of a PDA.